I am really not patient. I mean, I really want to be patient, but I'm not really that patient. And when I think about that, when it comes to God, I am like, is that a bad thing that I'm not that patient? Um, am I the only person that feels that way? Um, and so because of that, I want to have a conversation about it today. Welcome to the You, Me, and Jesus podcast. On this podcast, I share all about my experiences growing up with God, growing into the calling that God has had on my life, and experiencing the supernatural. When you're listening to this, you're going to hear from me as well as many of my friends talk about all the experiences we have with God. Some of the things you're going to hear are going to make you go, what? I cannot believe that happened. Other things are going to make you cry, and some things are just going to make you laugh. But you're going to hear all about how we experience God. The goal of this podcast is to help you hear God clearer, get closer to God, and experience all of the supernatural. And so thank you so much for listening to the You, Me, and Jesus podcast. So welcome back to another episode of the You, Me, and Jesus podcast, where we talk about all things you, me, and Jesus. And today we're talking about patience and waiting on God. And like I shared earlier, I am just not really as patient as I would like to be or whatever. You know, there's all these different scriptures that talk about waiting on God. Let's do a quick Google search on some of those scriptures, you know, I love, like if you watch me, you know, or listen to me, you know, I love doing good Google searches. So we're going to type in here on Google waiting on God and let's see what comes up in the search. Like I, all these scriptures here is, I can't say that, that they're really me, you know? Okay. So waiting on God scriptures, Joyce Myers all through this search. <laughs> all right. So here we've got, let's see, 15 uh, Bible verses about waiting on the Lord. <laughs> So sounds so spiritual, um, but okay, let's get into it. Okay. So we have uh, Psalm 27, 14, wait for the Lord, be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. Isaiah 40, 31, but they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Last one, Lamentations 3, 25, the Lord is good to those who wait for him, the soul who seeks him. So, okay. I want to tell you what the experience that I was having just now reading that, um, the experience that I'm having is, is kind of twofold. So first off, I just feel like I feel a chill. I feel like the Holy Spirit's presence. Like it's just so, um, it's so strong right now. Like I didn't feel it before, but I feel it extremely strong right now. And so I just kind of feel like I should ask him like, what's going on? What are you saying? Why are you here? <laughs> you know what I mean? So this is kind of unplanned, but let's ask the Holy spirit. Why is he here showing up this way? Okay. I've never done this on a show before, but Hey, you know, you, me and Jesus. So Holy spirit, why are you showing up this way right now? Because I want you to know that I'm with you. Okay. But why specifically when we started reading the scriptures about waiting on you? Because of your impatience and because of their impatience. So is there something specific that you are wanting to tell me and to tell them. Yes. Okay. What is it that you want to tell us? That when you wait on me, you don't get ahead of yourself. That you run it. You don't run into brick walls. You don't run into alleys th that can hurt you. That you're guided through the meadows with me when you wait on me. Whew. that's what I heard. So I'm like, okay, <laughs> you know, as we, you know, hear from the Lord there. Um, and, but also, so as I was reading the scriptures, I felt guilty 
I felt the sense of, man, I wish that I was more spiritual. I wish that I was more like some of the spiritual people we see online. I wish I was more patient. All of that just kind of came across my mind when I was reading this. So thank you, Holy Spirit, for showing up and comforting me, giving me peace and just reminding me of the benefits of waiting. Um, that was amazing. Um, so as I was ha having this thought process about this conversation, um, what I was thinking about is like, I'm gonna get comfortable cause like, I just want to get comfortable. So what I was thinking about is like, it's not always easy to wait. Right. So I was having this conversation with my best friend and we were talking about how she was calculating something financially or whatever. And all of a sudden she heard God say, stop calculating. And as soon as she did that, something came through that she was not expecting that was financial. And so she was good. And for me, I have been preparing to move to Houston, uh, in a couple of weeks. And you know, when you're moving, you have to calculate all the costs and know the amount of money you need to spend for everything. And I was calculating my deposit. I was calculating, um, how much it costs to get a moving truck and all the things. And, um, what ended up happening was the apartment that I found, I was so excited about it and I applied for it and they said, okay, you're approved. And I said, okay, what's the deposit? They said, we don't have deposits. And I was like, what do you mean? You don't have deposits. I paid a deposit my whole life. They're like, we don't have deposits. And I was like, what? And then, but it also reminded me that the place where I'm going to move to own the place where I used to live. So when I applied, they could see how much I was paying for rent. They could see my income. They could see my history of paying on time. They could see everything, you know? And it was just like, so all this money that I didn't need to pay for deposit was like, wow. And then a friend of mine was telling me about renting a pot and putting everything in a pot and they would move everything. And I was like, and when I called the pod people, like, they were telling me it's going to be like $8,000 to move me with a moving truck. I get it. The pod people were like, oh, it's going to be about 3000. And I was like, I'm sorry, what? And all I have to do is to find movers in San Diego to pack up my stuff, put it in the pod. And then the movers in Houston to unpack my stuff and bring it into the house, which is a whole lot cheaper, you know? And I was just like, well, that's amazing. And so I started calculating all that. And then all of a sudden I got this email asking me to speak at a conference. I was at another conference and I was in the car and I was like, I'll take this call. And on this call, they were like, we want you to speak at our conference. You'll do two workshops. It's da, 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 da. And our speaking fee is $7,000. And I was like, okay. And basically that $7,000 covers my entire move, you know? And I'm like, wow. You know, but here we are. I was in this moment in time where I was like, okay, here's what I've got to do. And God's like, I actually already have it covered. Right. Um, I have been single now for over 10 years since I got divorced and I've had like all these seasons of like waiting, like no one asking me out on dates, just nothing. I mean, no matter how many apps I got on nothing, you know, and I just feel like the Lord is just like Kenya. If it's like what he just said to me earlier, like if you would have been dating, it would have taken you down a dark alley. It would have been not the greatest experience, you know, that you don't want to have. You're trying to preserve yourself for marriage. And so you could have potentially gotten caught up in stuff like that. And I feel like I keep, I feel like he's keep saying to me that I've got someone for you when you get to Houston and all of this waiting time has been preparation for all that you're walking into when you get to Houston. And but I can't say that I've been the most patient person. Like, I mean, oh my God. Like if you have listened to me talk about dating and all that on the show before, you know, I am like on and off the apps and every time I get on, God forces me to get off, you know? And so that's my impatience. Me like on every show, on every stage, always telling everybody I'm single and DM me and all this stuff. And no one ever DMs me, you know? And that's my impatience of feeling like God can't just bring him the way that he wants to bring him that I've got to actually 
do something, you know? Um, and I kind of feel guilty about that if I can be honest. And I'm sure you, there's things in your life where you're like, Oh my God, I'm not as patient as I need to be or should be or want to be or whatever, you know? Um, but when I thought about today's show, I said, what is it that you need to hear? What is it that I need to hear? And what that is, is would be, I know that God doesn't seem like his timing is right. It doesn't seem like he knows what he's doing or that he's doing anything. It doesn't seem like anything is happening and everything's at a standstill. But the same God, I'm talking to you, but I'm talking to myself. The same God that created the heavens and the earth, the same God that created me, the same God that has done all these other things for me and with me is the same God that is going to bless me in the areas where I desire to be blessed. Like I desire to have zero debt. I desire to have my body completely healed. Right. I desire to have money as an issue out of the, out of the way. I desire to have friends that love me, that love Jesus, that I can be my whole self with. Um, I desire to have a family that's supportive and kind and all these things. And I desire to have a spouse that I feel safe with and that I can trust, you know, so much more thanks to a spouse, but that I'm safe with and that I can trust. Not that I trust that I can trust because if I, meaning I can trust him because God is like, this is him. You're going to be okay with him. I can trust him. My level of trusting him will be however it's going to be over time, but like I can trust him. Um, so that's my, that's my desire. And sitting here in this moment, I'm reminding myself of that. There are great people in the world and there are people in the world looking at me and there's going to be someone that God says, her, go to her, go and talk to her. And that's going to be the one that God wants for me, you know, in whatever way that that looks like. And what I am reminded of in this moment is that even though it doesn't seem like he's doing anything, he is like the same way that whoever this man is, is asking himself, will he ever meet ABC, whatever. Right. And God is having to remind him of there is somebody and I'm preparing her for you and I'm preparing you for her. Right. So it's like on the both sides, like he's asking for me and I'm asking for him and God's doing what he's doing in the both of us. And if I look at who I have become since going through divorce, I'm an entirely different person. I guarantee you, if I sat down in a room and had a conversation with my ex-husband, he would say, I don't know who you are. Right now, there'll, there'll be aspects of me that obviously, you know, but the growth and maturity and the pruning and all the things that needed to happen in me ha were happening the last 10 years. And does it make sense that God wouldn't bring the man while I was going through that journey? Yes. Do I wish it was shorter than 10 years? Of course. But am I grateful? For that 10 years, absolutely. Because there's a part of me that's like, I'm so glad I got to go through a lot of these messy seasons that were just so painful without him, you know? Um, and I'm glad that he's going through all his messy stuff, messy cleanup stuff without me, you know? And I think I feel comforted in that. Um, when I look at the place where I'm going to move to in Houston, like I found a place and I love my place, but it's smaller than I wanted it to be perfectly okay with that. And they reached back out and said, Hey, we've actually got something bigger. 
and it opens up July 8th. So you can move in the first month and then we'll prorate your rent. We'll prorate and we won't call to charge you any money and you can transfer it to this other unit. And the first unit was fine. I could take it. No big deal. Ugh. When they gave me the link to the other unit, this was what I was looking for. I wanted the floor, the ceiling windows. I wanted this experience. When I came home, I wanted this walkway. I wanted these different things in my apartment and I've got them. I wanted the glass shower door, like all these little things. I wanted to have community events. I wanted to have lots of meeting space where I can have events and all this stuff. And it's got all the things I wanted to be in a nice area. It's got all this stuff. And I'm just reminded that while I was doing my search to find the perfect apartment, that if I just calmed myself and just said, God, which one do you want from me? He made it clear and no deposit, just easy breezy. Just like the, I am so amazed at the process that it has been for me to get this place or whatever. And I'm praying for more favor on everything else. Cause I'm like, I don't know, even know what else is needed, but praying for more, you know? So if you are waiting on God, right? I hope that you will go back and rewatch the beginning where God was just like resting on me and talking to me and wanted me to tell you this. Um, because I'm like you, I'm in the waiting for lots of different things. And God is so kind where he's trying to tell us, don't go before your time. Because if you go before your time, you're running into a brick wall. You're running down a dark alley. You're running to a place unsafe and it's not going to turn out the way you want it to turn out. But if you wait, I will go with you. If you wait, I'll go before you. I'll make crooked paths straight, you know, um, because that's what he does. That's what the Bible says that he does. And that's what he does. So I just want to encourage you to wait, wait and talk to him, wait and strategize with him, wait and do the work with him. You know, like there's so much therapeutic work that I have had done on myself that pff, this next, everybody that's encountering me is get to, is getting to experience the more healed version of me because I've been going through all this work, you know? But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope it was a blessing um, to you. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe to the channel. And if you're listening, please write a review. I don't really hear from you guys very often. And I love hearing from you, how it's resonating with you, how it's encouraging you. Um, and your words encourage me as I encourage you. Thanks for listening to the You, Me, and Jesus podcast. I'm so honored and thankful that you have chosen to listen to this with us. What we would love more than anything next is for you to write a review. When you write a review on iTunes or Spotify, it actually helps the podcast be found by more people. So if you can do us a huge favor and give us five stars and write a review and feel free to tell us what you've loved about the episode. Thank you for being here. We're praying for you. We love you and we pray the best for you and your life.